And uh, tonight we have a good message. A good message. Are you ready? I was like, my husband came up here, and I'm like, oh, my God, he's taking my time. I'm like, that's, that's what happens when he goes away. And who was here Sunday? Watch it. He, no, I'm just saying, <laughs> it's like, no. I'm going to try to keep it because I haven't preached, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to keep it so I'm timing myself. So I'm over now going to tell you where to go. Go to Philippians 16, 1, verse 6, and just be there for a moment. But the title of my message, let's put the title of my message first, is Life in the Midst of the Mess. And, you know, maybe you're here tonight and you said, but I'm not in a mess. You know, praise God, I'm just a messenger, you know. Many times we feel that we're the messenger of Jesus Christ, right? Um, but inside we're a mess. And, you know, and a mess doesn't have to be like something big. Sometimes we think, you know, we're good because it's, it's messy. Have you ever gone to a house? Like I have one, one of the, I'm not going to tell you where, but you come to this, this room and it looks really pretty. But if you open the, you know, one of the cabinets, it's a mess, <laughs> right? It's a mess. And then, um, and, you, and I don't feel too bad because it's only one drawer, you know, and then, uh, more time goes by, and then I fill another drawer. And then all of a sudden, your house is a mess. And I feel that many times that happens to us in our lives. Because we live a casual life. We live a casual Christianity. And life is messy. I wanted to preach a different, a different message, but God wants to tell you that life is messy, and it's okay. In this life, we are going to encounter great, great uh, conquerors. We're going to conquer great things with God. In this life, he is going to see you overcome. He's going to see you successful, and he's going to be there with you to celebrate you. But you also are going to encounter messes in your life, whether it was by design, right? Because some of us love to design messes, 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 right? Not messages, but messes. So some are by the time, some, you know, someone threw you there and you found yourself in that mess. But I'm here to tell you that God is with you, that he loves you. As we're uh, singing the song like uh, Reckless Love, I thought that's the only way we can convey that love that God has for you and us in our darkest moments. In our human capacity of a brain, what would be a word that we can describe that God never leaves us, that he is always there with us, that he is so reckless. And, and that's the word that we call him, reckless love, but he is so calculated in his love. The moment that Adam and Eve sinned, he put a plan in action for our salvation. The moment that that took place, he said, he decided, you know what, I'm, no, I'm not going to allow my children. I designed them for worship. I designed them to succeed. I designed them to give life. And I'm going to tell you this 2020, and I, and I agree with Mara and what my husband was saying. Like, I believe that we are, it's not like almost at the end of the road, but you are like, okay, now you need to make choices. And it's your choice. You have come into this hallway. Picture this hallway, and then you just need to make a right, or which is not the right, right? But you understand my brain, right? <laughs> or a <I> left, <laughs> because I'm speaking to you to catch it. it when like, pew. <laughs> you got it, yeah. And I believe that many of us, like you said, we're in this place, and we have been very. I have personally uh, been very disappointed, or or angry, or unforgiven, or whatever, you name it, not a good thing, right? And you, and you stay in that place, and all you have to do, and I believe that we are in the year of breakthrough. I believe that this is the year of elevation. I, be, I believe that this is the year that God wants to see that way, even problems, a mess that we have made, he wants us to see it in a different way. And all he wants you to do is to be sure that he is with you and just take the step of faith. Just take the turn. Because I believe that, like you said, many people, we get stuck. We're in places. I, I've been stuck. I, I can say many times I've been stuck. And some of the 
times that I've been in the muck and the mire, it's, it's, I don't think that that's God's will for our lives. Things will happen, but it's up to you and I if we're going to obey God and believe God that he is able to bless our broken lives. You know, what's a mess? A mess is it's struggle. What do you struggle with? What's your struggle today? Where, what kind of place are you in life today? And you know, sometimes we're not very, we're not very kind. We, we think that because I am a Christian, I am a leader, or I am a pastor, I am a God believer, I, I, there is no way that I'm going to be stuck in life. There is no way that tribulation will come to me. There is no way. I know that God is going to come, and he's going to do it in three months. I know that God is going to come, he's going to do it in three days. Our God is eternal. And he's not in a timeline. All he's waiting for you and I is to trust them. So are you there yet in Philippians? Okay, this is where I get to do this. This is Paul. And he's saying, I am convinced and confident of this very thing. That he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, the time of his return. You know, when I read that, I thought the moment that you and I make a commitment to God and we decide to, you know, we say the prayer, you know, Jesus, come into my life, be my Lord, be my Savior. And we're like, well, I committed my life to Christ. God is already telling you, and, and, and Paul is already telling you, one thing that you need to be fully convinced and know and have no doubt is that the moment that we accept Jesus Christ, that's the moment that he starts the good work in you. But see, when we are in a mess, we think that God stopped the good work. When we're in trouble, we think, you know, like, what happened to the good work that he started? He promised, he committed himself to you. He's in a relationship with you and I because he's expecting that relationship. He's the one committed many times. We're not the committed ones. You know, he's faithful. We are unfaithful to him because he's faithful to his word. And I think you need to know one thing that if you walk out to the, tonight out of here is knowing that you, I need to be fully convinced. And I need to be fully convicted that the good work that he started in me, and I don't know where in you are in life, whether you're good, you can go to gooder, right? That's not a word, but you know, you go to great, right? From great to greatest. But wherever we are, he is always at work and he's eternal, And I'm, I was telling God, you know, let this word, let this, this, this uh, scripture be a scripture that I chose for me this year. So this is my chewing scripture. These are the ones that I'm, I'm going to meditate, and I'm going to meditate, I'm going to meditate, I'm going to meditate until I'm fully convinced. Because I'm going to tell you, when we hit rough places, I haven't been fully convinced that he's still working in me. I haven't been fully convinced that he's working on the other people that I'm trying to pray for, right? Because we're good. Many times we're good. at We're in a mess, and we love to point out fingers, and God is not into that. God is into you because it's, it's a relationship between you and him. But he's so committed. And it's in the mess or in our struggles or in our chaos or in our darkness that we think that he left us because we usually do that to him. We leave them. You know, we run. You know why this, this thing is not working? I'm out. Right? God called me to this place, but it's, I don't see the finances. I don't see the change. So I, I'm out. I'm going to see what I can do because God left me. No, he is committed to your good work. And he says, I am committed to you until my son returns. And you know that salvation, so he's committed to our salvation, but we're not committed to our salvation. He says, the word of God says, work out your own salvation, right? But we don't want to work out our own salvation. I want God to work out my salvation. I want God to do all the work. You know, Mara said, it's, yeah, the, the Lord gave, gave them manna, but they needed to get up and get out of their tents and do their, pick it up and go cook it. 
and bake it. And actually, there was a time frame that if they, if they didn't get up by, let's say, 11 a.m., because someone wanted to sleep, you know, Israelites, right? <laughs> the thing would disappear. It would melt. And sometimes we're mad at God because we put him on this timeline, but actually, he's waiting on you and me. And waiting doesn't mean just like my husband said, said we're just going to wait in, in Jesus' name. No, waiting means serving. Like, you go see, when you go to a restaurant, you see a waiter. There, he's not sitting and waiting for you to serve him. No, he's actually serving. And so I believe that you're going to be very encouraged today, but you're also going to be challenged. Do I really believe this word? Do I really believe that the work and the promise that he gave me? Because we usually focus on the promises of God, right? No, but do I really believe the salvation of God is active today in my life, in my mess? Do I really believe that if I'm in addiction right now, do I really believe that he's still working in my life? Maybe your marriage is not too well. Do I really believe, do you really believe that God is working in your marriage because he's at work and he says that he will never stop working until Jesus Christ returns? Do we really believe it? And I thought if we just, and this is for myself, I said, if I just believe that he is 24-7 constantly working in my life, and I'm fully convinced, so then, then no matter what happens, no matter what comes, no matter what mess, no matter what struggle, no matter what circumstances will come my way, then I can overcome. I can overcome because I am convinced that he is committed in this relationship. He is committed to me. He is committed that I'm going to succeed. He is committed to my wholeness. He is committed to my deliverance. He is committed to you. And you know that he's not committed out of duty because sometimes, you know, like, people, have you met people that are, they're committed and they're so good at their commitments, but it's out of duty. It's out of like, oh, you know what, I just have to do it. No, Jesus, he gets to do it. He wants to do it. And in the last three days, I, I, I've been fasting and praying, and I'm going to tell you that I had this revelation, like, and this is where he took me, like, Virginia, because you haven't been fully convinced. And if you are just fully, just convince yourself. And we're like, okay, today I'm convinced, right? And tomorrow you're like, no, I'm not convinced. Because <laughs> today I felt great, you know, I, I felt good. You know, people were nice. I got good news, so whatever. Like, God is good. He sits on the throne. And, you know, we start declaring and let the walls break down, right? But the next day I didn't wake up that way. And then the next day, a question, am I fully convinced? Is he really committed to me? Because I don't feel you. <laughs> the winds are not changing. So to me, I told the Lord, this is my scripture for 2020. I'm going to make sure that I am convinced and confident of this very thing. This very thing, point the finger, says this very thing, that he who began a good work in you, you didn't begin it, he did it for you. He's able to finish it. And that means until his son returns. So that means, in other words, it's daily. And the Lord said to me, you, we want encounters, you know, like, hey, I love encounters. But we have been called to live by faith, and that's daily. That's daily being fully convinced. And he spoke to me this on Sunday. Are you fully convinced? Oh, I think it was Saturday night. If you're fully convinced, then you will make different choices. If you're fully convinced, you will already change A, B, and C. And it wasn't with condemnation. It wasn't like he brought a stake and he wanted like, pow, 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 you know? No, it was with so much love that I was like, oh. and that's what the, the word of God says, that his love covers a multitude of sins. Because when he speaks to you, he, his word is life. In the midst of your mess, there is life. And we either choose our own life and what we want, or we either choose his life. 
whether choose my truth, because there are realities, the reality is that, you know, I've been in this place and God is healing me, but that's my reality, but he's also has given you his reality. Yeah, you're right. And you know what I picture? I picture him saying, if you want to be fully convinced and you, your will is not in agreement because we have a will, right? We have a soul and we have a spirit. And the spirit, your spirit and my spirit, because he's been saved and we have invited Jesus into our lives, our spirit is always willing to believe. So even that, we have it. But our will and our feelings, they're partners. And then I picture myself, you know what, if I have to drag my will and my, my feelings and dragon, I'm going to drag those two things. Because I'm going to be fully convinced. Because if we're going to see our city change and everything that is happening in this world, and, and if I want to see myself whole, then you, I don't know what you're believing, God, then if you want to see that, then you drag your feelings. We're like, we drag your feelings. Yes, drag your feelings and your will because your feelings sometimes, you know, like, okay, I feel great, right? Our feelings change all the time. But if you're willful, have you ever met a willful person? All of us are willful, just in different ways. I'm like, whatever it takes to be fully convinced. Because, see, the enemy wants us to feel already defeated. We're already in 2020, and maybe nothing has changed in your life. Maybe you're still praying the same prayer, believing the same thing, believing for a sign, believing for a wonder. And God is wondering, when are you going to commit to his word? God is wondering, like, I already gave you a sign. I sent my son. And yes, we're going to see signs and wonders, but those signs and wonders is seeing the dead resurrected, seeing those who are broken delivered. Those are the signs that he's talking about, but we're asking for signs just to feel better. Just to feel like, no, you are with me, Lord. Today, if I see someone, this is years ago, like years ago, okay, so don't take it that hard. But this is years ago, maybe like, okay, I've been walking with God 23 years. So I said, uh, so I was believing for something. I said, I need to see a sign. So I went shopping, and then I said, I, see, I need to see this lady, a lady, and I gave like a description of a lady and this lady needs to be buying some sort of thing and then she needs to say hi to me isn't that crazy <laughs> I was doing like who's the guy who does the fleas and whatever like okay I need okay if it's wet in the morning right, who was it right Gideon right Gideon was like give me a sign and you know what it's okay for Gideon to get to ask for a sign because the Holy Spirit wasn't present You know what? That's what they ask for signs. Even even the the disciples, like when they didn't know, okay, let's let's let's. They all got like ten sticks or twelve sticks, like lots, right? And like whoever gets that smaller stick, then you're it. You're gonna be the usher, right? That's what happened to Stephen, right? Like he was like, okay, he was chosen because he got the last straw, whatever. Guess what? Because the Holy Spirit wasn't present yet. Because. Jesus hadn't descended yet. They hadn't seen him yet. They hadn't received the Holy Ghost. And so I think we have confused the signs and the wonders that we're asking God. Like, okay, Lord, I'm waiting for this sign. I'm waiting for this sign when I see my child change. Look, he's laughing. <laughs> I'm waiting for the sign when my parents do this. I'm waiting for the sign when my spouse does that. I'm waiting for the sign when I see this. That's not the signs that God is talking about. He's talking about, no, no, no. The sign is that let you, be, you become the sign. I told the Lord, you know what? I want to be remembered. I don't want to be remembered. Maybe my last three years have been like, ugh, I want to puke. But I said, I don't want to be remembered for the last three years. I want to be remembered there was a woman that I didn't quit. I want to be remembered that I dragged my will and my feelings and I align myself with God. I want to be remembered by people saying, yes, she suffered from depression, but you know what? She decided to align all that, and guess what? Wholeness came. But that takes a 
determination. That takes commitment. And it's not easy. Someone asked me, does life get easy? Because I used to think that life will get easier. Father, in the name of Jesus, this will get easier, you know. Me forgiving people will get easier. It doesn't get easier. You get stronger. Life does not get easier. Let me pop that bubble. <laughs> but let me inflate another bubble. You get stronger. So we're waiting, and I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Like, when is it going to get better, Lord? When am I going to feel better? Like, no, be fully convinced that I'm a work in you right now. Maybe you're hooked on drugs tonight. I'm going to tell you that God is at work in your life right now. Right now. And he's pursuing you just like he's pursuing someone who's doing well and who's obeying God and who's doing everything. He's pursuing just the same way, the same reckless love. That's the way he is with you. Because he has no favorites. So we think we have to be perfect. And that's when no, nobody's getting freedom. Nobody's being set free because... Hey, I, I'm doing well. You know what? You have to be reminded you know what? when I'm not doing well, he's a work in me. There is work happening in me. I'm under renovation 24 7. And have you ever been in a renovation? They're messy. They're dusty. They're ugly. They're inconvenient. They're like, Ugh. Just thinking about moving, I, I get like, because I need to change things. And you know, life is full of seasons. Because there is four seasons in our lives, right? So say, I'm going to be convinced. Not only convinced, but you're going to be confident that he's at work in you right now. What do you need? You know, our salvation is for today. You know, we think we get saved, and I think that's our, in our hum, own humanity, we think, you know what? I, well, I got saved 23 years ago, and God will continue to deliver you and deliver you and deliver you and deliver you and heal you and heal you and heal you, renovate you and renovate you until Jesus Christ returns. And so when we're in trouble, we feel like, well, no, that shouldn't happen. Oh, no, that's a secure thing. Messes will come. Offenses will come. We don't like those promises. But you and I can overcome. The love of God is everlasting. And his grace has no expiration date. Because that's our vision, right? Like, he forgave us for our sins. I was thinking about the message that my husband was preaching on Sunday. And about that, you know, that put on the code of colors or righteousness. And I'm like, we want to put on the color or, 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 or the righteousness, the rubble righteousness, when we're doing well. When I feel good, then I, I, okay, that day I can wear that. No, he wants you when you feel filthy in, in your own rags. That's the day that you put it on. You put on the robe of righteousness. And you choose to believe, you know, he's still at work today in my life. Nothing has changed, but God is changing me. Because the word of God is transformational. The word of God brings change in our lives. So I'm going to ask you, like, how's your commitment to, to God? How's your commitment to his word? Do you believe his word? Do you believe that he's available now, right now? And many of us don't run to him because we're like, I should be way ahead because I've been saved for 23 years. I've been saved for so many years. So I should be further. How can I allow this mess? How, how did I arrive here? It doesn't matter how you arrive there. What, it matter, what matters is that God is very present to save you. God is very present and he wants to deliver you. Ephesians 1, 17 to 18 says, 
I always pray, this is Paul again, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant you a spirit of wisdom, of revelation that gives you a deep and personal and intimate insight into the true knowledge of him. For we know the Father through the Son. And I pray that the eyes of your heart, do you know that we have eyes in our hearts? Because sometimes we, it doesn't say we receive salvation through our brain, through our mind. It says we confess salvation with our mouth and we believe with our heart. We're sometimes so confused because this is a battle here, right? No, but he says, no, you have the eyes, the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you. Do you know that he has called us to hope? But how many times have I even come out of my mouth, you know, I feel hopeless. But I have been called to hope. But I can only hope when I'm seen through, the, through my heart. And who, who do we invite when we say, say our salvation? Jesus come into our. I never heard a prayer where it says, Jesus come into my brain. <laughs> come into my knowledge. Come into my mind, Lord. No, it says, Jesus come into my heart. Because it's in the heart. It's in the seat of, it, that heart is the core of all your emotions and your will. And then when you address your heart and you tell your heart, you know what? We're out of line right now. We're going to commit right now. And you commit every day. Jesus commits every day. And think about your life. I don't know how, if you've been saved how many years. Think about just, just a glimpse of your salvation trajectory. How many times have you messed up? How many times have you sinned? How many times, because we only think sinning is if it's immoral. No, sin is sin. If you lie, you're sinning. If you saw candy, it's a sin. Right, so no one is exempted. But we only think about big things. I'm good because you know what? I haven't done this. I haven't done the unpardonable sins. No, sin and sin. And I believe that he wants us to see through that. To be confident of that expectation that we have been called to hope. He says, he has called you the riches of his glory in glorious inheritance in the saints. God's people, you, we are God's people. And we are God's people who don't believe in God. We're God's people that many times we're not committed. When it gets rough, we're like, see ya. You know what I know? Why I know that? Because I've done it. You done it? Ooh, yes. <laughs> You're like, I, I, you call me for this? Excuse me? I'm giving you my life, Lord? No, he gave it all already. He already gave it all for us. You know, Romans 12, I didn't give that, but Romans 12, we love to quote Romans 12, two ways, says, you know, but that we need to renew our mind by the word of God, right? But Romans 12, one says, present yourself, your body as a living sacrifice. And I believe this is where it comes in. Like, I'm going to present myself daily. I'm going to offer my brokenness daily. I'm going to offer whatever your addiction daily. I'm going to offer my family daily. I'm going to offer myself daily. That's presenting yourself as a living sacrifice. Because it's so hard. It's not easy. You tell me, if picture the most awful thing that you've been in through the last year. And did you feel like presenting yourself? Here, Lord. I'm giving you my brokenness. No, we were here, Lord. Where are you, Lord? See, but that's what we need to be fully convinced. And I told the Lord, I want to see this year through the eyes of my heart, but a heart that is devoted and committed and passionate about Jesus. This year, I want to do things that pleases you. This year, I want to deal with me. 
This year, I want to confront my messes. This year, I want to confront my struggles. This year, I want to confront it, but I don't want to confront it alone. You need to confront it with God. Because he has never, he has, this is a partnership, this is a relationship. And, you know, sometimes we don't know what this relationship with Jesus looks like because we are, you might be married, you might be in a relationship and there is no intimacy. And when I talk about intimacy, I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about knowing the person. But our relationship is both ways. It's not one way. So he has shown us his part. He said, he he says, you know what? I love you. I'm committed to you. I, I give you an inheritance. You're, you're secure with me. In this relationship, I will never leave you. In this relationship where you hit hard times, I'm going to be there for you. And sometimes we get really mad and I've been angry at God. You, ooh, Yes. Because sometimes I'm expecting people to be there for me. I want people. I want flesh and blood. So I'm saying, you know what? You're not enough. What I'm saying to God, you are not enough. And what you did on the cross wasn't enough. Because I want so-and-so to help me. But when you come and you convince your heart and you're confident that he is a work, you live a different life. Maybe things don't change right away, but I'm going to tell you that you will live a different life and as children of the most high God you know everybody's talking about like and I'm almost done in five minutes but everybody's talking like everybody's talking about the you know the uh, Prince Harry right and uh, what's his wife Megan right Marco and so I was like I wasting time right I should be studying so I decided to <laughs> to watch uh, to watch uh to watch, uh, you know, a documentary. But what, what is all this? You know, what is all this? Why are there big, mix, such a fuss about everything? I watched it, and I'm like, who wants to be part of that kingdom? <laughs> like, who wants, I mean, you should watch one. Who wants to be part of a family like that? It's such protocol and protocol. Like, you can't, you can't see even your mom because she's the queen, and you have to request, uh, you have to request uh, a what do you call uh, an audience with your own mother? You can walk behind her, like you, you have. You can walk beside her. You have to walk. I don't know how many steps behind it. Even if you're married to them, to, when you come in, you have to come in. Even like looking this way, and when you're done with the queen, then you have to bow, and then you have to walk backwards. And their own kids, and then they always have to have the hands like that. As women, I'm like, who wants to do that? <laughs> no, not me. Then I thought, and we are invited to the kingdom of God? And then this is the Hebrews 4, 16 says this, let us, this is the, the privilege that we have in the kingdom of God. He says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And I was watching the, you know, the documentary. They can be dying and they still have to like get a hold of the queen and they still have to prove it. And oh my gosh. And I saw the whole thing. It was someone, I don't know which king was dying. And, and I'm like, the daughter couldn't go in because I'm like, and here I'm reading the Bible and I'm like, he's giving us access. He's like, I'm not denying you any access to my kingdom. Actually, when you mess up, that's why Harry had to do it behind their back, right? Now you understand? I'm like, oh, no, I understand because what kind of kingdom is that? But God is telling you, you know what? I already know that you're in a mess. Because I think it's in uh, Psalms, I don't know, some Psalms, 144, 21. I think it's 144, 21. It says that he knows all of our secrets. So you might be hiding something, but he already knows your secret. How many secrets do you have? And I'm talking secrets, Right? It's not like, I ate a pupusa yesterday. No. I'm like, no, secrets. You know, like, I was fasting, but, you know, the taco called my name. And... How many secrets do you have? 
and you think they're well hidden, I'm going to tell you that he sees your secret and he's still calling you to come into the throne room of grace. And he's still committed even though you're hiding, we're hiding our own issues. He said, I'm committed to you. I'm crazy in love with you. And I want you whole. But he says, come to the crazy. You know, um, as I was reading the Greek, the word boldly means freedom in speaking. He's giving you the liberty. When you go to see the queen, you have to, it's a protocol how you have to salute her, how you have to, how you have, to have a conversation with her. You, you don't sit down. Actually, you don't sit down when you have an audience. Even this is from government and everything. You don't, the queen sits down. You stand up. And according to Jesus, he says that he is seated. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And that's where we, you and I belong. I'm like, he even sits us. And he gave us the place of his son. And I'm like, wow. It means like if I get an audience, he's telling you, come. And he says, Freedom in speaking, unreserved in speech, openly, frankly, without concealment. You don't conceal nothing. So if you're going to come to the throne of, of, of grace, he knows it. So why are you concealing all these things? Lord, I come to you. Forgive me. And I'm not making fun of anyone because that's what I've done. For you. No, he already knows. It's this free, fearless, blunt. He says, come and be blunt with me. This is the relationship that you and I have. This is how secure you and I are. This is how much I love you. This is how much whatever you tell me, I already know it. So I'm not going to give up on you. You might give up on me, but I'm not giving up on you. I'm going to fight for you. And that's how he wants us. He wants us to go in our messages in our time of need. You think, you know what? I'm going to have a, a throne room moment when I'm well no so if we are to live like that I, I thought you know what I need to live this year from the throne room every day that's what it means like we think in time of need but I need him daily so it's not like once a month every reveal right no it's daily and then the other word that it says it says go in and it says that he has given the, a privilege and he says, come shameless. Come raw. As you are. Oh, Lord, but I already know what you've done. I've been knowing. I saw you do it. I was with you. That's why I left you my Holy Spirit. You're not live, doing life alone. So you took me with you when you went and did what you did. You took me with you when you were sinning. You took me with you when you were doing this. I was with you. Because I'm committed to you, to your salvation. I'm like, and we're searching, all of us, and even, even single people, even married people, we're searching for this love. And, and it's in front of us. It's Jesus. And he has given us access. Access. And he says, you know, and when you come to me and you speak frankly and be blunt, have you ever met blunt people? Like, they're very blunt. Don't you want to just slap them? <laughs> oh, it's just me. Sorry, I'm not that spiritual. It, the flesh is like, shut up, you know? How dare you did that? And he's like, no, I actually want to converse with you. I want. He is asking us for an audience. He's actually calling us. Hey, come in. The door's open for you. You don't have to ring everything ding. No, just come in as you are. And actually, I want you to come in to have an audience with me in the midst of your chaos, in the midst of your mess. You're more than welcome. So I'm closing with this. I don't know if you feel that you're broken today, and I thought, you know, for many Many times I have said, you know, my life is broken. So who wants a broken person? Have you ever met someone messed up and broken? You look, like, oh. you start doing crosses and using, using um, canola oil, right? 
and for those who have more than like olive oil and then incense and whatever, and we sanctify it. And I'm going to tell you that the church many times doesn't know how to give grace. And when I talk about the church, I'm not talking about just this church, because who is the church? You and I are the church. Do you know we don't know how to give grace? There is the issues that we are afraid to talk about. But we have a high priest that he can always relate to us. And he says, just come. You're messed up. You're perfect for me. Let me perfect you. Because that's the work that he's doing. He says, I will perfect you until the day of my son, Jesus, returns. And we are so afraid because we're not perfect. We're not good. We're not enough. You don't have to be because he is. He is more than enough. Therefore, I am more than enough. He desires to heal you. He desires for you to confront your, your struggle, your chaos, your mess, your brokenness. He wants to have an audience with you. And he's calling you to come in. And you don't have to curse him. And you don't have to walk backwards. No, he says, I want you to come in like that. Messed up. Go in. And he says, and I'm going to give you the grace and the mercy that you need. So I want to encourage you that this year, we as children of God need to believe the word of God. We need to stop putting God in a timeline. Because I many times I have said like, oh, no, he is ready. He's always ready for you. So I want to pray with you. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes.